Sport, which is super awesome. Eco, who cares? Welcome to Texas Truck Channel. I'm Craig and Brian's finally ready to take something else up this hill test. We've got something special for you. That is the Ford Expedition what, Brian? Timberline, baby, Timberline. Look, we've had a non four low transfer case expedition up here and it did surprisingly well and I'm sure this will do even better. Let's get the ABD out of the way. Starting at the front, you get a different front bumper. You've got more cutout kind of like the z71 and at4 gm tahoe yukon different bumper you got a real steel skid plate and a real painted plastic lower valence but that's real, okay real plastic. that's real plastic it's real plastic yeah. yeah but you also get orange tow hooks to match the orange theme of timberline which Ooh. i think is kind of cool and unlike some of its counterparts <clears throat> Toyota, it has a tow hook that's right out in front easy wait to what get to. it's just right there just yeah and another one up there there's two huh. They're just where they need to be. Weird. All right, now that we've got the glory of this thing out of the way, let's talk about where it came from. And that is shot in Kirk Ford in Granbury, Texas. We've said it before, we'll say it again. Ford doesn't have everything we need in their fleet, including the Timberline. We've asked several times for two years, they haven't had it. So we said, you know what? Let's talk to our boys at shot and Kirk and get it taken care of. If you're looking for a Timberline, this one in particular, or any others, or any Ford product, hit up Charles Brockman. His contact info is below, but it's really good to work with for us. Now, approach angle, Craig. Any guesses on what that puppy is? Because it's formidable. Well, I know what it is now because it's our third take. Okay, great. 28.5. <laughs> That's actually insane. That's a ton more than the non-Timberline. No, that really is a lot. And it's a lot more than its competition, if we're honest. So and, and remind the viewers, what a, we need about 20 to have a chance on the main line. Right, which tells me in terms of approaching and getting its wheels up, it's got it covered. So the problem with it, Craig, and this is a complaint I actually have, is the wheel and tire. Ooh. The wheel is okay. I think it looks fine. Looks good. Looks good. Good design, 18 inch, powder coated. Like it's, the white letters. I like the white letters. But it's this tread compound and pattern. Wait, is this a like a trailer tire? What, yeah, what is this? I think it's a wagon wheel tire. Okay. Um, okay. It drives pretty bad on these. It doesn't handle well. It wanders in the highway a little bit. And the tread pattern doesn't look that aggressive enough to make a difference in what we're doing here. So if you are serious about off-roading, you're probably going to put a KO2 in here or maybe even a dirt track. There's, a, there's different things you can do within Goodyear to get there. But all that out of the way, they are 33 inches tall, so they have the leverage you want off-road. And remember, big tires make for small potholes. So that's that's what matters when you're doing off-road stuff. Uh, they are 265 7018s, and that's plenty. Now, break over, Craig. We've got some wheelbase we got to deal with. Yes, yeah, so it's a long car. Long car. 21.9. Not terrible. Not, Not terrible. terrible. That's because of... Well, yeah, exactly. So ride height on this thing is... 0.7 inches higher than a standard expedition at 10.8 inches of ground. 10.8, wow. That's a lot. That's that's worth mentioning. It's worth doing. And then, of course, departure angle, which we don't particularly test in the show. It comes in at, golly, 23.7. Oh, that's, that's pretty good. Pretty good. Now, a few things I do want to point out, and Craig mentioned this earlier when we are driving. This is an independent rear suspension vehicle. There are yes. some trade-offs compared to a live axle scenario like maybe that guy over there. Look down there. Control arms. Now, keep in mind, control arms go up and over objects just like the wheel does. So they're in a spot where it's kind of okay. The benefit is there's no pumpkin in the middle that's super low. That does help. Um, but it's not going to have quite the clearance that that does. In fact, peek over there real quick. Yeah, you've got shocks to worry about and you've got the big spare tire to worry about. This spare tire is actually a little higher on the Expedition, but because of the way the suspension is designed, that might be an issue. Let's check out the goodies inside. All right, Brian's going to show us some of the goodies because one thing Ford, one of the things Ford does for all their vehicles, they have drive modes, drive modes, drive modes, drive modes, and then more goodies after that, Brian. All the drive modes. Yeah, let's check it out. So we're low on fuel. I'm going to use my power steering column. Oh, that's nice. Look at that. Mm. All right, what do we have here? Digital gauges. We have down here drive modes. Oops, he felt on. Thank you. Low on fuel. Thank you. Okay, so you've got tow haul, sport, which is super awesome. Eco, who cares? Normal, slippery, sand, mud ruts, Ooh. tow haul again. So mud ruts might be applicable today, but we're obviously going to start in normal and see how she does. In terms of hardware and buttons, you have, uh, oh, you see that guy right there? Oh, what is that? The most important feature on an off-road vehicle, I think, locking rear differential, that means wow. something. You also have two high, four high, four low, and four auto. Wait, what? That's something that a lot of its competition does not have. Mm. GM and Ford seem to have four auto and a lot of stuff, and that is nice because when it's slippery and snowy and you're on pavement, you just leave it on and there's no buckling or anything like that. 
it just works. It's very helpful. And it shows that Ford means business having four auto and four low and a locker. That's a big deal. Yeah, this is not to be laughed off as a joke. This is a real deal. I want to do it a little bit different this time because yeah. we've had some complaints about not experiencing some of the neat features these cars have. Let's go to mud and ruts mode and see what it defaults to. Okay, so why don't you, why don't you put it on because it's going to switch. The yeah, or... so normal, I'm going to swap it over to, and we're not in sand, mud and ruts is the most applicable thing that we have right now. Four before ship in progress. Four high is its default, so not four low. Rear diff lock is not applied. So, okay, but um, we can still add those if we need to. But it turns traction control off. So four high mud ruts, traction control off, although there's a traction management system with four mud ruts right, mode. Right, right, right. It's, so it's in its own mode is what it's done. And the gauges have turned green. Oh, green, that should help. Okay. Okay, so but what we're doing now is we're applying power to the front wheels. So that should get, get us up further. No slippage, very good. Let's check this clearance. What's up? So, you're good, I just wanna show the viewers this. So this okay. is where the approach angle really helps. 28 degrees, you can see here, we still have daylight there. We're not even touching. If we needed to touch, we could, because we have a metal skid plate, but it is just a non-issue. All right, you're good. Spinning that tire and that tire. Okay. All right, very interesting. So, Brian, a couple things. We got plenty of clearance so far. Okay. Um, and what we're doing Which in is four, a big deal, by the way. Very big deal. And what we're doing is we're spinning in four high. We're spinning that tire and that tire. Okay. We got the next trick is the diff lock. I don't think four low is necessary. Four low would give us more control, but it wouldn't reduce. It wouldn't increase grip in any way. It wouldn't stop slippage. Exactly. Right. So let's lock the rear. Okay. Rear diff is locked. Four high. Mud and ruts mode. All right. Let's see it. All right, so what, here's what we've got. <laughs> we've got a tire that's struggling because it's wet and muddy. And also, uh, this is part of our complaint. This is not a very good tire. I can tell you right now, yeah. if this was even a Falcon Wild Peak, it wouldn't be doing that. Absolutely. So I'll ask you to hear is for low. Otherwise, we'll just have to reset the line. Let's try to do for low without resetting okay. the line. I don't know it'll make a huge difference. I don't either. I think we can. Because it's still just going to slip. Well, if we bump the line a little bit, it would make it up. But sure. for the sake of science, we just add things in the spot we're in. We're and after this, we'll just reset and yeah, try it. Well, you said it looks like we're not going to make it. Oh, we're going to make it. Well, I mean, just reset. <laughs> Let's, go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay, that front wheel is still slipping. It's trying to bite. It's trying to claw. Okay. All right. So we whoa. <laughs> so we really taxed it. Like I was left foot braking, and that's why I was trying to climb one of those. Okay, and it almost so did it. I'm actually kind of impressed that the actually not impressed. I'm kind of shot in the mud and ruts. Is it more effective? I'm I'm really surprised about that too. So yeah. now, do you have any warnings or anything? Because we've taxed no, the system. Nothing. No, none, nothing. None at all. Um, cooling fans are on because that was a little bit of a turbo boost there. Four low diff lock traction off. Um, four collisions off because we're in off road modes and low fuel. That's it. I'm gonna try one more trick. Let's go to sand mode. Okay. I doubt that makes a difference, but let's just see what she does. Nope. So I think we're just going to back up a little bit. And just do a little bump. Little small bump. Okay. Maybe come to the right just a tag because you did slip to the left. Okay, I'm going to go back to mud and ruts because it, it wants to be in four high for sand. So I'm okay. going to leave it in four low. Okay. All the goodies. All the goodies. Diff. Locked. Okay. There we go. Um, let's just see what she does with a little bump. Okay. One more, one more. Okay, are we good? Yeah, we're good, we're good. Let's try, um, 
I'm trying to slippery now. Because traction management's not doing much of anything. It's not. You got no grip. All right. Okay, Craig. Brian, it's, it's not going to make it. This might be our first fail that made it over the nose. I know. It is purely down to the tire. It really is. Oh my tire gosh. makes a difference. Well, we've gone up this with a regular highway tire and had better luck on a non-Timberline. Yes. It's, it's frustrating, honestly. Yeah. Uh, don't spec this tire forward. Sorry. Yeah. That's where it's at. But right. great rig. Back it down and we'll do the, uh, the old bypass bye line. Yep. yep. All right. Okay. No problem. All right. All right, Brian. Well, that's a very interesting hill test because this thing had all the goodies it should have to get it up Man. and over. But what this proves is this hill changes every day, just like a river does. Yep. And oh, so, yeah, more challenging this than it normally is today. Very wet. And when it's wet like this, the tire makes a huge difference. Hi, boys. There's our biggest fan. Say hi. Hey, all right. So, that's pretty much it. Has the hardware, doesn't have the shoes. Yep. Stay tuned uh, for more. Be sure to like and subscribe, and thanks for watching. See you next time.